rumble, but do say so myself. Welcome back to Adventuring with Angie. Last week I enjoyed what felt like the last few days of summer and got the walls up on my bathroom build. This week is two weeks. Come with me as I check out a queer wellness festival in Yosemite, dive into new rituals for myself in the home, stay committed to this build, and join a badass group of new people to hike a death-defying river trail. We're doing a lot, so let's get into it. Fall is here and I can feel it. My freezer, I, it got stuck open the other night. Oh my god, everything in my freezer melted. I'm talking ice cream poured into the bottom. So, entire freezer is going in the trash today. I'm really sad about that. In sharing my weeks with all of you, I'm actually working on two different timelines with a decent gap in between the weeks I'm releasing and the weeks I'm living now. As the seasons begin to change and the equinox came and went, I feel like I myself am on the cusp of something big, and lately it's felt like a little bit of a disservice to my growth and integration to keep one foot so far in the past as I release these videos. So this week I'm bringing you all up to speed, and I hope that moving a bit more in real time will help me as I continue to be present in my life. Oh my god, they smell like that apple body spray from Bath and Body Works. Like, mm. wow. <laughs> I'm, yes. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Good morning. Why does he have to pee right on my side? <sighs> I'm gonna go drop him at daycare. And then I am gonna take myself on a journey today. I'm gonna go buy some things that I need for this festival tomorrow. For the next four days, I'll be in the woods of Yosemite with a thousand other queers for the Some of Us Festival. I spent most of the week running errands and getting my life in order so I could enjoy this event and take four days fully offline. like to do we need breaks from it to remember that we like it distance truly does make the heart grow fonder for everything that and it'll just be nice to like be meeting people and not documenting everything so i'm gonna do my best though scout's honor i made it i made it i made it i made it <laughs> after four hours of driving <laughs> looky look <laughs> found some friends found some more friends I'm gonna go slowly make this way back to camp and like get some food and see what is going on on this little campground. I truly moved in when I arrived and I'm so proud of my space and that I actually took the time to bring the things I knew would make this weekend extra cozy for me. I thought I was being a little extra packing a full length mirror, but when everyone was doing fit checks in my room throughout the weekend, I knew I made the right choice. Ooh, what are we making? I'm just gonna saute some onion, zucchini, and cremini mushrooms with a little bit of butter and seasoning and then throw in some couscous and greens and make a little bowl. <laughs> it just kept going. <laughs> All right. Just like a really simple <laughs> vegetable medley. <laughs> Why not? Welcome to the camp kitchen. <laughs> the festival gave me everything I wanted and needed. I spent time with friends, I met new people, I got to deepen my relationships with the few friends I already have, and I spent four beautiful days almost entirely off the grid, hence why I don't have too much filmed. 
Something I love about this festival is that it's 100% community focused. People are open and friendly and looking to connect and it's one of the most fun and inclusive spaces I've ever been in. The schedule was jam-packed with dance parties, meditation, workout classes, sex parties, journaling sessions, and so much more. I spent most of my time bopping around with friends and found myself at a morning yoga class one day. I even got myself on a run one morning. I already bought my early bird ticket for 2024, so if you find yourself at some of us, let's connect. I woke up today back in my home, holding my high from the festival and also a new life. I've been pretty transparent about going on dates and meeting people in my new town. When I got home yesterday, I actually made plans to see someone I'd gone out with before. We spent the last three weeks texting between dates and our schedules finally aligned. I was so excited for our sunset hike and hang, but when the time came, they 100% stood me up. Later that night, I got a text from them explaining what happened. Only they forgot to apologize in the text for wasting my time and they didn't ask to reschedule even though they said they wanted to hang. So I knew I had to leave this one alone. I'm at this point where I just can't not listen to the things my body is telling me. The universe is funny though, because the very next day I was going on a hike with someone that I've gone on a few dates with. And after our hike, totally unprompted and unplanned, they took me to this beautiful lake with the stunning sunset views. If you know me, I'm always looking for a sunset view. It was like a little cosmic reassurance that there are people out there that know my love language and they see me. At the same time, saying no to this handsome, funny, sweet man who flaked on me, that was big for me. I mean, like that was huge. Old me would have let that text slide, but I'm not her anymore. And she's never coming back, which means I find myself saying no a lot. I don't think we talk enough about the grief that comes with growth. I keep meeting people who are really fun, but as soon as I recognize a behavior or pattern that's not in alignment with where I'm moving and how I move, I can't ignore it. It's like my intuition is screaming so loudly at me to listen, and I'd be a fool to push away those signs and pretend that I can just keep engaging. I know I have so much to process and heal from, and with just this interaction and how low I felt after being ghosted, and when I knew I ignored a flag or two in the beginning, I already know that this is gonna be one of the loneliest and coldest winters of my entire life. And honestly, maybe that's what I actually need right now. <laughs> Listen, you know I don't have a kitchen table. <laughs> Mmm. 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 Wow. Hot oh, damn, yeah. That's a good one. Okay, the nutmeg, all the difference. A little bit of white wine. Mmm. Garlic. Mmm. Mm hmm. I woke up really excited to have a normal day on the property today and build with oval. What <sighs> a day it has been. So I dropped off Enzo at daycare this morning and um, I just finished a little bit of work that I had to do because, you know, an episode just dropped today. And now I'm gonna go over to the build site, Oval's over there and hopefully put some boards up. <laughs> I'm, I'm driving over, I'm sorry. I'm just, <laughs> it's one of those days. I'm really taking my time with this build, mostly because I'm juggling too many things, to be honest. <laughs> so I'm only working on this one to two days a week. You want to cut it? You want to cut it? Okay, cool. So like, I made like a long board, you know? They're so hard. Today we work to get the remaining siding up, frame the front for the doors, and make a plan for what's next. Looking good. Not that we had any doubts, but it was an easy day. And as the sun began its descent and dropped its golden glow on the yard, I decided to enjoy the fruits of this land and pick myself some pears. I have two pear trees and four apple trees. And while the bears have eaten the majority of the apples, I was able to find some great pears that hadn't been eaten yet. I wish my ladder wasn't down at the build site. <laughs> Got some pears. <laughs> They smell so good. Oh my God, like, oh wow. 
it is so nice outside even though i'm cold it's so nice and i don't know if you can see but the moon is like oh my god just right there i'm having a good day <laughs> Good morning, happy Friday, <laughs> happy autumn equinox. That's today, tonight, 11.50 p.m. Pacific. I need to shower and get my life together. But before I do that, I was like, let me set and ground a little bit today. I've been loving little twists lately, like, and just so simple to do and such a nice way to keep my hair protected but still give it like a little cute fun <laughs> since it's the equinox i really want to take a bath later like a cleansing bath i'm gonna actually go around the property and collect some pine needles and some cedar leaves and um do a little salt oil and, and make a soak so i'm starting early <laughs> good boy I spent a good chunk of the day just cleaning my house and revitalizing my space. I probably should have showered after. Maybe, but the boy is groomed. We're about to go take a bath. Grabbing my things for the cedar bath. I got some pine needles. Oh my god, this smells so good. And some cedar fronds. And I'm gonna go inside and mix it up with some oils and essential oils and salts. Um, get that ready for tonight. And I knew that going into the next season with this clutter and this mess would not be a good way to start. While cleaning, I noticed some of my flowers dropping seeds, so I decided to collect those to plant later. For this equinox, I focus on releasing the limiting beliefs I have of myself and my worth, and I focus on cleansing myself of the ties that I'm holding on to. The hot bath was everything and it gave me a chance to really sit with some of these feelings and release them into this container I've created. So I added blue lotus to my um, bath because blue lotus is really good with, um, I guess, getting in touch with your intuition and kind of grounding in yourself and your gut and trusting yourself. It's good for some other things too, but I added Blue Lotus and I think, you know, for this equinox, I'm definitely thinking about how to listen to myself more and trust myself because I haven't always been the best at it. And what's a true Equinox celebration if you're not feasting? I didn't have any seasonal foods on hand, so I decided to just lean into a meal that's cozy and comforting to me. I grew up cooking. On Saturdays as a kid, I'd beg my mom to take me to the library so I could check out some cookbooks and try new recipes. I was such a dork. In high school, my friends would ask me if I could cook for them during football parties and hangouts. In college, I continued the tradition by being one of the few people in my dorm who knew how to make real food. It's funny how something so essential and normal to my life can be a delight and treat to others. I'm grateful to have a mother who encouraged me to cook and made sure I could take care of myself. Cooking is certainly a love language for me, and if I cook for you, if I feed you, it's because I love you. And if you cook for me and you feed me, I might end up loving you too. I let this baby simmer for a few hours and enjoyed a late, late dinner before howling at the moon and calling it a night. I already know this bolognese is bomb. <laughs> Look who I found. 
On Sunday, I joined a semi-local group for a hike at the river. This group, Melanated Adventures, does a hike every Sunday somewhere in California, usually within a few hours of the bay. I've missed every single one so far, and when I finally could make one, I literally moved. So when I saw that they were doing a hike at the Yuba, I had to go. Oh man, listen, you know we love a lookout. We love a good river view. We love a death-defying cliff. Because <laughs> I, I was up there. <laughs> And now I'm down here. I had so much fun. There were probably just under 20 of us and we ventured on a short but pretty steep hike past the popular swimming beaches and all the way to our own secluded swimming holes. Granite slabs led the way there and some parts were so steep that I found myself clutching the ropes a prior kind soul tied to the trees. I only knew one person on the hike and spent the entire time meeting new people, chatting it up and swimming in the waters. We even spent time grounding with a breathwork session together and a cold plunge. I'm so thankful that groups like this exist and that there are people out there really inspiring others to get outside and be active. 10 out of 10 would hike with Melanated Adventures again and I truly can't wait for the next one. Ooh, that was a real climb. That was like a real climb. Thank you for joining me for another week of adventures. If you enjoyed this week, please take a moment to like it and subscribe to my channel. Next week, I get a visit from some friends. I find myself hosting a little Equinox retreat and I put in some work for my winter firewood supply. I can't wait to share more and I'll see you all next week. Bye.